And good evening. We are the new North Carolina Ramblers, and we're going to play some old-time music for you. We're going to start off with a tune that Posey Roar and Charlie Poole recorded back in 1926. In fact, I realized as we were eating supper tonight that it was 90 years ago today, in fact, that Posey Roar made his very last records. He recorded I Roll in My Sweet Baby's Arms well ahead of Lester Flatt and Earl Scruggs and Monroe Brothers, I might add. He recorded in 1931 with Preston, uh, Preston Young and Buster Carter. And Posey recorded 130 sides for record companies in a seven-year period. He died in 1936 at age 44. Anyway, he recorded 130 sides, and I have the sales figures for some of those sides. I don't have them from all, but on the ones I do have, he sold 514,000 records, which was an enormous amount of records back in the 1920s. So we're going to start off with one of his tunes, a good dance number, and if you feel like dancing, just help yourself. A little ragtime Annie. All right, get it, Wayne. Charlie Poole and Posey Roar uh, played here in Floyd. In fact, uh, there was a guy here, a deputy sheriff years ago, named Albert Weddle. He had a brother named Ivan, who was a wonderful old-time fiddler here. He used to play out at Mayberry Mills on Sundays. And Albert told me that one day when he was a boy, a young man, teenager, he came into town, and he said right down here on the corner where the old Floyd Hotel used to sit, he said was a huge crowd of people gathered there on the corner. And he said, I heard the prettiest music I ever heard in my life. I didn't know who it was. But he said, I wormed my way up in that crowd. And he said, sitting there on the counter, playing for nickels and dimes, people pitching money, was Charlie Poole, Posey Roar, and Norman Woodleaf uh, playing there on the corner. And uh, he said, a guy named Ace Boone brought him up here, and, and they sat on the street corner and played. And I was told by another guy that they used to play in this building here. Uh, they would sleep upstairs all day and then come downstairs and they'd move counters around. They would dance in here and play for dances inside. So we're in the right place uh, to be playing this music. This is where he spent a lot of time. The only place he spent more time was in Franklin County because he liked the refreshments <laughs> that you could find. 
particularly down at Shooting Creek. Uh, he liked to go down to a guy's house named Press Martin. I uh, lived down at Shooting Creek, and that's where they turned their corn into liquid assets, uh, uh, too. And he liked to, he loved to go down and spend time at Press Martin's house. And Charlie was a very beloved figure in this area. People were crazy about him and his music. And, uh, and he encouraged other musicians to take up this music and play it as well. And uh, he had a big influence. And a lot of his tunes have a, a humorous uh, streak to them, and we're going to do one of those for you. It's called You Ain't Talking to Me, which is the name of our... Uh, program tonight, and I'll uh, kick this off for you. I met a girl the other day, her name was Lindy Lee, and now my boys, I'm telling you, she sure looked good to me. Tis leap year, she said, would you like to wed? But when I found she had ten kids, this is what I said. Now you ain't talking to me, no, you ain't talking to me. I may be crazy and all like that, but I got good sense, she see. Now you ain't talking to me, no, you ain't talking to me. I liked her bit, but too many kids, you ain't talking to me. Get it, buddy. I went up to a lady's house to buy my bite to eat. She fed me on some pork and beans and pie called mince meat. She says, now Bill, I sure did feed you good. Would you step out in my backyard and chop a stack of wood? Now you ain't talking to me. No, you ain't talking to me. I may be crazy and all like that, but I got good sense you see. Now you ain't talking to me. No, you ain't talking to me. You fed me good, but I can't chop wood. You ain't talking to me. Now me and my wife has ups and downs throughout our married life. She says the one day, Bill, let's stop this sorrow and strife. We'll go down upon the lake one evening just about dusk. We'll jump the lake and drown ourselves, no one to grieve for us. Now you ain't talking to me, no you ain't talking to me. I may be crazy and all like that, but I got good sense you see. Now you ain't talking to me, no you ain't talking to me. When the lake goes dry, it's time to die, and you ain't talking to me. Thank you. So much of uh, what Charlie and, and particularly Posey played was dance music, and uh, Charlie was a real champion dancer. I had a guy named Ted Prillman told me over at Martinsville, Collinsville, he said he used to play the banjo for Charlie to dance, and he said, people talk about Fred Astaire, he said Fred Astaire couldn't have held a candle to Charlie Poole when he came to dancing, that he would dance on his hands, he would literally th spring up on his hands and start dancing on his hands around the room. And I had a guy, when I gave a speech here to the Floyd County Historical Society probably 10 or 15 years ago, uh, I told that story about Charlie dancing on his hands, and the gentleman came up to me and, and said, you know, my mother was from Shooting Creek and said when she was uh, suffering from dementia and was in the nursing home, said she would always start telling the story about, well, we were at the dance, and then he came in, and he was drinking, and he started dancing on his hands. And, and he said, I always thought my mother was making that up. I didn't know what she was talking about. But he said, you explained to me today she had seen Charlie Poole at a dance, dancing on his hands. And he was a marvelous dancer. And we're going to do one of those dance tunes. This is one of, old, one of those old Scots-Irish tunes that came to America. Remember, the people who moved to America changed only their mailing addresses. Uh, they brought their culture with them, including their music. And this is one of the tunes they brought with them. Uh, in Scotland, it was called Pigtown Fling, uh, or Kelton's Reel. Over here, they call it Wild Horse, or Wild Horse of Stony Point. And here's uh, Charlie Poole and Posey Roar's version of the Wild Horse. And we're going to kick this off in G, is that correct? Yeah. All right.
a little wild horse. Now, there were a lot of musicians from this area who became very well known in old time music, and some of whom were associated with Charlie Poole. And one of them was a guy named Ernest V. Stoneman from over in Carroll County. I had the very good fortune to talk to Ernest Stoneman twice back in the winter of 1968 over in uh, Stokes County and then in Rockingham County when his family came to put on a show. And he told me some good stories about playing a series of fiddlers conventions uh, with Charlie Poole. And uh, he, he was talking about, he told me, how he, he said, I used to sit as close as I am to you, to Charlie Poole, and listen to him sing Monkey on His String, and I couldn't understand what he was saying in person. <laughs> and it is a difficult song to, uh, to understand. But Ernest Stone was a very interesting guy. You know, he had uh, 23 children, he and Hattie, uh, had 23 children, 17, survived to adulthood. Well, he told me that, that uh, there in Grayson County, they lived down next to the railroad tracks, and he said the train would come through every morning about 5 o'clock and wake them up, and he said it was too early to get up and too late to go back to sleep. I, I, have, no, I have no idea what he meant. I have no idea. He did not explain, but he did have the 23 kids. <laughs> Something happened there. But at any rate, this is a family show. Uh, so, so, so anyway, so we're going to do one of his songs. He was the first person to record this in 1924 called The Titanic. I had a sinking feeling he was going to sing this. But... Oh, uh, mm. If you like that one, you can use it. But at any rate, he's going to do the Titanic. Uh, and believe it or not, and th this is true, within a couple of months after the sinking of the Titanic in April 1912, there were more than 160 songs written about the Titanic. I kid you not. It's an amazing number of songs that were produced about that event. And this is one that has survived. And uh, Darren does a wonderful job on the Ernest Stoneman number here. And uh, we'll take off with the uh, and, and, and of course, when Stoneman recorded it, he played alto harp and harmonica uh, and, and would s take a break on the harmonica and sing it and then catch his breath and go back to playing the harmonica. So we're going to do it. Neither one of us are full of hot air enough to do both. Right. So, <laughs> so they're going to do it Stoneman style, the Titanic. If you know it, sing along on the chorus. Seven the 
All right. Yeah. Nice job. Nice job. Yeah. Good job, Ernest. Well, we'll continue with an, another ballad here that comes out of uh, Wilkes County, North Carolina, recorded by a musician who was originally from Carroll County next door to us, but a guy by the name of Henry Whitter, and he went to New York in 1929 with a guy named G.B. Grayson, who was from just over the line in Tennessee, uh, from Ash County, Boone, Watauga County, that area. And uh, they record a song about a guy from Wilkes County named Tom Dula, D-U-L-A, that people call Tom Dooley. It's kind of like when I grew up, we called okra, okri, you know, <laughs> okri, not okra, but it's spelled okra, but pronounced okri. Well, it's spelled Dula, but pronounced uh, Tom Dula, uh, Dom Dooley, rather. And uh, at any rate, he, he got in trouble uh, over some women and, and it wasn't a, a love triangle, it was actually a love quadrangle. Uh, it, was, it was Tom Dooley, uh, Laura Foster, uh, Ann Melton, and Pauline Foster. And all, all those women were among his harem, I guess we should say. And had there been penicillin back then, uh, there probably would have been no ballad about Tom Dooley. <laughs> because it, <laughs> because of what precipitated the murder, okay? and no penicillin. They did use, I might add, back in that era, this is gonna be on the test later, so I hope you write it down. They used liquid mercury to treat that ailment. Uh, they did, like mercury in a thermometer. I'm serious, they used liquid mercury. And it led to a saying that one night with Venus could mean a lifetime with mercury. <laughs> so, so, someone will explain that to you <laughs> after the program. But at any rate, that, that, this is kind of a sordid story, to say the least. But Tom Dooley, of course, was uh, arrested uh, uh, by a guy named uh, Colonel James Grayson, Grayson over in Trade, Tennessee. And James Grayson was G.B. Grayson's uncle. And it was G.B. Grayson who recorded the song, uh, Tom Dooley. And uh, Tom Dooley was uh, captured uh, in East Tennessee, taken back eventually to Statesville, North Carolina where in 1868 he received a suspended sentence. He was suspended about 10 feet off the ground. Uh, there. He was hanged. <laughs> uh, if you like that one, you could use that too. But at any rate, <laughs> but Tom Dooley was hanged on May the 1st in uh, Statesville, North Carolina, for the murder of Laura Foss. It's a very complex story, but, uh, and sordid story too, I guess we could mm -hmm. say. But here's uh, the story of Tom Dula, uh, done up by Wayne Martin and the gang. Yeah. When uh, uh, Margaret and I have had a chance to actually spend some time in Happy Valley, it's kind of an ironic name, uh, where the, where all these events took place. And after the actually after the Civil War, it was it was quite a um, uh, hot bed. Hot, yeah, and a, and a very um, it's <laughs> featured in, in Charles Fraser's book actually, Cold Mountain, on his trip back, and um, it was devastated by war, and there was a lot of um, fighting on both sides. There were still Union troops that were there and, and Confederates coming home. Anyway, it was a very tough situation. Yeah. But after the war, the people who are there in Happy Valley today still talk a lot about Tom Dula. Uh, but they say, you know, um, that it, it's a story of two young people who made bad decisions, even though there are more than, more than two people involved. But... Um, but this, as you know, the song by a fluke became the kind of the, the song that started the folk revival in the late 50s when the Kingston Trio took a version of this and, and recorded it and it, it, it took off like wildfire and that's what started the folk revival. But this is kind of a more of a little archaic version of it. And uh, I know there's some North, you know, we're in Virginia, I love Virginia, but there's some North Carolinians in the house. Yay. <laughs> and uh, we're going to dedicate this to, to Tommy Goldsmith because G.B. Grayson was actually uh, one of Ralph Stanley's uh, favorite fiddle players, even though he was an old-time fiddle player. And uh, Tommy's writing a book on the Stanley brothers. So he's in the house. Tommy, where are you? <laughs> he also has written a great book on Earl Scruggs called Fo Foggy Mountain. A right amen, amen. Wonderful so, book. All right, we're going to try this, see what we can do. Get 
Tom Dula, hang down your head and cry. Kill poor Laurie Foster, poor boy, you bound to die. Better on the roadside, where to beg to be excused. Better on the roadside, and there you hit her shoes. Better on the hillside, as God Almighty knows. Better on the hillside, and there you hit her clothes. Took her on the hillside, make her your wife. Took her on the hillside, then stopped her with your knife. Hang down your head, Tom Dula, hang down your head and cry. Kill for Laurie Foster, poor boy, you bound to die. Dug her grave four feet wide, dug it three feet deep. You pulled the cold clay o'er her and tromped it with your feet. This time tomorrow, well, where do you reckon I'll be? If it hadn't been for Grace and boys, I'd been in Tennessee. Hang down your head, Tom Dula, hang down your head and cry. Kill poor Laurie Foster, poor boy, you bound to die. from a white oak tree you can take down this old violin and play it all you please this time tomorrow boys it'll be no use to me hang down your head tom doula hang down your head and cry kill for laurie foster poor boy you bound to die another uh, up-tempo dance tune for you from the repertoire of uh, Charlie Poole and Posey Roar, one they did in 1926, called The Flying Clouds, and The Flying Cloud was a clipper ship that set a world's record sailing from Boston around the Horn of South America and up to California. I forget how many days it took, about 94 days or so, but it set a world's record, and tunes were written about the flying cloud. This was in 1854, I think it was, that that took place. So that, t that tune has survived into the repertoire of Charlie Poole and Posey Roar, a one called the Flying Clouds Cotillion, and if you want to cut a step, you're welcome to do so, in the key of G, I yeah. believe. G, okay. <laughs>
Flying Clouds, Flying Cloud Cotillion. I want to mention there's a gentleman left uh, in this area who's probably maybe the only person left alive who saw Charlie Poole play in person. I think the gentleman is around 95 years old now, and he told about going to a dance over in Rock Castle Gorge and uh, standing at the window and watching uh, people's feet as they danced, and Charlie Poole and the group were playing for the dance in the house, and maybe they were playing Flying Clouds, but the interview with that gentleman is featured uh, in Charlie Thompson's wonderful film about Rock Castle Gorge. If you haven't seen that, uh, you'll have an opportunity to see it on July the 17th over at the Lyric Theater in Blacksburg, Virginia. Uh, I've seen the film, it's a marvelous film. Anybody in here seen that so far? Isn't that a wonderful film? Just really great, it's a, it's a prize winner to me. And if you get a chance, you can go over to Blacksburg. It's in the mid-afternoon, I believe, what, Charlie, three o'clock? Three o'clock at the Lyric Theater in, in Blacksburg, Virginia, uh, too. And it's a marvelous documentation of the lives of those people in Rock Castle Gorge and the culture that they produce. And it, as I said, it's a marvelous film. It, it brought a tear to my eye in places, uh, too, and it's wonderfully done. So uh, put that on your calendar. Uh, we're going to do another Ernie Stoneman number here, uh, one called Tell My Mother I Will Meet Her. Can I borrow your... Uh the banjo mic. The banjo mic. Oh, yeah, yeah, sure. He absolutely. needs one for the guitar. We forgot yeah. he was going to need yeah, that. Yeah, this is one. Um, this is a song that uh, back in the 1980, I was working on a set of records called Round the Heart of Old Galax. I know it's the county sales, county records put out, and I got to produce those. And this is one song that I, I wanted to put on the uh, album because I just, uh, I don't know, I'm sort of sentimental in a way, and that it just really appealed to me. And we've never had a chance to do it. We're going to do it for the first time tonight. Mm -hmm. And it is, uh, it's sad. It's a little bit of a sad song, like a lot of these uh, old time songs, but it's, it's a good one. It's a good one.
through where the good of earth are gathered with the faithful and the true. Tell her that her boy will meet her in the land beyond the blue. Very nice. Very nice. We're we're going to get uh, Sarah Carter to get her guitar <laughs> over here, uh, or Maybelle, or Sarah, and we're going to, we certainly need, if you're going to do old time music, uh, you need to do at least one Carter family number, because they had such a profound influence uh, on this uh, great old time music, and of course, Charlie Poole had recorded two years before the, the Carter family had, and he helped pave the way for people like the Carter family, and Grayson Whitter, and Blind Alfred Reed, and other folks came along after him. And uh, they're going to do a, a number that's on, uh, the, the title of this tune is on uh, Sarah Carter's tombstone, if I'm not mistaken, out there at the Mount Un Vernon right. United yeah. Methodist Church mm -hmm. uh, there in uh, Hilton's, Virginia. But uh, they do a wonderful job. Uh, he's going to play guitar, and he's going to do an instrument here that we ought to harp on more. Uh, see, we ought to harp on more, uh, because it's really a good instrument. Okay. <laughs> Okay. If, can I can I brag on uh, my my uh, bandmates here? So um, it's such a as long as it's not Kenny's jokes. <laughs> <laughs> it won't be his jokes. It's actually Kenny's banjo style, which is I think he's the only person I know that mm -hmm. continues to carry on that Charlie Poole style of banjo playing and really do it right and do it well. It's so good <laughs> and. Darren is uh, is a real um, expert in uh, the the Carter family style of um, playing guitar and singing. And I think he knows every song they ever recorded. And just about. Pretty close, pretty close. And, how, and how many is that all together? Two hundred seventy-three. That's why I have to uh, read the Stoneman ones because I don't know them yet. <laughs> You have to specialize in something. Right? That's right. Well, I've been singing them since I was four. I don't know if that's good or bad. And uh, and and don't forget about Bud and his Roy Harvey style. He just oh yeah. Up on. yeah yeah yeah. Working on that. Thank I can you. Tell. Yeah. yeah. The, the Charlie Poole band. They instead of playing flat picking like you see a lot, they, they played a a lot of bluegrass. They played a kind of roll and. Uh, mm -hmm. And ba Bud or Bailey is doing that. It sounds so good. So we ought to give him a hand. Yeah. yeah, Bud's been a professional musician almost all his life. He started going on stage with us when he was three. <laughs> so you got 13 years in now. So. <laughs> He's almost, trying to out. Almost 14. Yeah, almost 14. You'll be 17 this year. You're getting too old, son. You're going to catch me one day. Anchored in love divine. Is that yeah. what we're doing, right? Yeah. yeah. That's what you're doing. <laughs> I hope that's what you're doing. <laughs> Sunshine at last, and Jesus abiding above. His dear arms around me are loving like haste, and sweetly tells his love. The tainted the tempest forever is o'er. I'm anchor is holding, I'm safe evermore. What gladness, what rapture is mine. The waters receive the danger is past. I'm spirit is happy. Pilot my storm beaten soul. Sweet peace he has spoken and blessed his dear name. The billows no longer roll. The danger of a tempest forever is over. My anchor is holding, I'm safe evermore. What gladness, what rapture is mine. What is the danger is danger is past. I'm it is happy. Through life 
even in death, completely I'll trust to the end. I'll praise him each hour in my last fleeting breath, shall sing of my soul's best friend. The danger that tempest forever is over, I ain't for his hope and I'm sweet evermore. What gladness, what rapture is mine, the danger is past. I'm anchored in love, I'm anchored in love divine. Marvelous, marvelous rendition of that old Carter family uh, song. It's hard to beat the Carter family. That's they did the kinds of tunes you walk away humming after you hear it uh, too. Just really wonderful stuff there. Uh, and we're going to go back to some Charlie Poole music here. Uh, in the summer of 1925, Charlie Poole uh, and his brother-in-law, he married uh, Posey Rohr's sister, uh, Louima Rohr. They were all from Franklin County. And uh, he and Posey and a guy named Norman Woodleaf quit their jobs working in the cotton mills there in Spray and went to New York to try their hand at making records. Now, Columbia Records did not invite them to come. They went on their own without an audition, without any connections. Charlie, bless his heart, couldn't read a stop sign. He was illiterate. Uh, Roy Harvey said the only thing that Charlie Poole, he ever saw Charlie Poole read was a sign that said to eat. If it said to eat, he, he could read that. But other than that, he couldn't read and write. And so they went into New Jersey, uh, moved to Passaic, New Jersey, took jobs working in factories there. And one day Charlie took a day off from uh, work and took the ferry into New York City. And I always marvel at how he found his way to Columbia Records. He couldn't read a stop sign, you know, he couldn't read a street sign. And with his accent, he had a real thick a rural North Carolina accent, he found his way to Columbia Records somehow and asked them for an audition. And Frank Walker told him to bring the band back and he'd give them a tryout. And Norman Woodley who lived near us when I was a kid. He didn't live so far from you and I. And Norman used to walk over the house sometimes on Sunday afternoons, and he was playing guitar on that record. Norman said that uh, they went into a little room, and Frank Walker, the A&R man, artist and repertoire man for Columbia, was in there with some guys, and he asked them to play a tune, and he said they played about two rounds of Don't Let Your Deal Go Down, and he said Frank Walker stopped them and said, okay, we'll record you. So Charlie and Posey and uh, Norman stepped before the microphones, and Norman said we were terrified. Uh, you know, he said, Charlie said that was the last tune he had ever recorded sober. Uh, <laughs> and he said, as far as he know, knows, he kept his promise. And uh, he said they were all scared to death. Norman told me he was so frightened, he said they had to send down to a pharmacy downstairs and get the pharmacist to mix him up something to calm his nerves before they got before the microphone. But they recorded that day four tunes, uh, The Girl I Left in Sunny Tennessee, I'm the Man That Rode the Mule Around the World, uh, Don't Let Your Deal Go Down Blues, and Can I Sleep in Your Barn Tonight, Mister. They released that first record, Don't Let Your Deal Go Down, Can I Sleep in Your Barn Tonight, Mister, in September of 25. Now understand, at this time, a good-selling Columbia record sold 5,000 copies. A hit record sold 20,000 copies. Don't Let Your Deal Go Down sold 102,000 records. It was an enormous hit. Well, for that, Charlie Poole, Posey Rohr, and Norman Woodleaf were paid $25 apiece. That's all they got out of it. Now, of course, that was more than they made working a, a week in the spray cotton mills, but, uh, but they, they, they sold 102,000. In the second record, uh, Man Rode the Mule Around the World and The Girl Left Sunny Tennessee, released shortly afterwards, it sold another 65,000. That was 167,000 records that those guys uh, recorded, uh, sold. And for a guy who couldn't read and write his own name, he did pretty good, I think. And he did it stone sober. And it took a lot of courage for a rural southern boy from a cotton mill town in the south to go to the big city on his own and ask for an audition. And it paid off uh, for him and the band, as it turned out, mm -hmm. and, and helped... Uh, bring old time music into into people's homes that otherwise would have never heard it. So let's give a, a little bit of Don't Let Your Deal Go Down Blues, uh, 102,000 copies. And uh, we'll, uh, let me make sure okay. I'm geared up here. Yeah, gee. Ready? Go ahead. 
good tune still a good tune we've got some folks here tonight who drove in from richmond virginia who are especially like the song the wreck of the old 97 so i'm gonna wreck that for them uh, here <laughs> and uh that uh, was an event that occurred in danville virginia back on september 27 1903 i was just a chap uh, when that happened <laughs> living on Moyer street <laughs> so we're gonna do wreck of the old 97 uh kelly harrell who was from uh, originally lived in Freeze, Virginia, and started making records in 1925, and he moved down to Fieldale, Virginia, and he and Posey Rohr made some records together for Victor in 1927, but uh, Kelly Harrell recorded this song in 1925. Well, Kenny's tuned in. How many of y'all have heard Kenny's radio show? Just curious. It's the best, isn't it? Uh, this, uh, Kelly Harrell did a, a really long version of the song, long, uh, not as long as my presentation, <laughs> on, on but he did a real long version of it. It includes verses you don't normally hear, uh, and I'm, I'm going to do some of the verses that Kelly does. Uh, so this is a tribute to Kelly Harrell as well, uh, who made a lot of records, uh, and a lot of good ones, uh, too. Uh, I'll kick off a little of the wreck of the old 97. I was standing on that mountain one cold frosty morning when I looked down below. 
saw the smoke just a blowing from an old steam engine way down on that southern road. It was 97, the fastest train ever ran on that southern line. All the freight trains and passengers pulled aside for 97. She had to be at the first station on. Saying, Steve, you're way behind time. It's not 38, but it's old 97. You must better dispense her old time. Well, he turned around to his black greasy fireman, saying, shovel in a little more coal. And when we cross that white oak mountain, you can watch old 97. It's a mighty rough road from Lynchburg to Danville at Lima's a three-mile grade. It was on that grade that he lost his air brakes. You see what a jump that he made. verse about uh, ladies take warning uh, mm -hmm. of now and learn and never speak harsh words to a true loving husband he may leave you and never return Steve Brody the engineer was a bachelor he wasn't married <laughs> so, so it really didn't make any difference in his case uh, I, I think we're close to closing our first set and we'll close with a, another one of those uh, boy meets girl boy murders girl type songs uh, <laughs> I heard, uh, I heard them playing earlier on, on the show, uh, The Knoxville Girl. That's one of the oldest Boy Meets Girl, Boy Murders Girl songs. It dates back to the 1690s, actually, in England, based on a real murder that took place. But this is a, kind of the opposite of the, the other side of the 78. This is Girl Murders Boy. It's a, a girl named uh, Frankie Baker out in St. Louis, Missouri, uh, back in October 19, 1899. Had a run-in. She was 24, and she had a run-in with her 17-year-old boyfriend a guy by the name of Alan Britt, and they had a big fuss, and he picked up a lamp to throw it at her. It's kind of a shady romance. And he, and he picked up a lamp to throw it at her, and she shot him, uh, mortally wounding Albert. And from that event came a song called uh, Frankie and Albert, or Frankie and Johnny, we know it better, and Charlie Poole recorded it under the name of Leaving Home. Uh, and it's based on a, a true story. Uh, Mae West made a movie about this ballad, uh, Cause she done him wrong. You remember Mae West? Uh, you ever heard of her? She was the one that said she used to be Snow White, but she drifted. Uh, <laughs> there's another part of that, but I'm not going to quote it. <laughs> this is a family show. Uh, so we'll we'll close out our first set here with a, a little leaving home. Let me run. To am, I, am I there, guys? Yeah. Yeah. That'll work. 
Yeah. yeah, Charlie Poole did this in 1926. He called it Leaving Home instead of Frankie and Johnny. It probably would have sold better under the title Frankie and Johnny, but the, it was the other side of the 78 that was a hit. The other side was called There'll Come a Time Someday, which was an enormous hit, sold 81,000 copies uh, for him. This is gonna be on the test, remember. How many copies did There'll Come a Time sell? 81,000. So we're gonna do uh, a little uh, Frank and Johnny or Leaving Home as Charlie Poole called it. I'll kick it off, guys. Now Frank and Johnny were he cars, they had a quarrel one day. Johnny vowed he'd leave her, he said he ain't going away, never coming home. Going away to Rome. Now Frankie begged and pleaded, my own Johnny, please stay. Now my honey, I'm done you wrong, but please don't go away. And Frankie cried, and Johnny sighed. Oh, I'm a going away, I'm a going to stay, and never coming home. Gonna miss me, honey, in the days to come when the winter winds been go to ground and covered up the snow. Gonna wish you back, you loving man. Quite a large affair. Now Johnny fled down the stairway. Cried Frankie, please don't shoot. Frankie took aim with a 44, five pounds of root of toot toot, and Johnny fell. And Frankie yelled, Oh, I'm a going away, I'm a going to stay, never coming home. Going to miss me, honey, in the days to come. When the winter winds are going to go around and cover it up and slow to think of me. Going to wish you back to your loving man. take I believe about a 10 minute break and give you time to walk around get some fresh air and so on and so forth and we'll be back with a brand new set of jokes uh, in the <laughs> second hour <laughs> okay we'll be back in about 10 about 10 minutes if that's okay if you have any requests uh, we actually already had one but we said these instruments